Welcome to a very wet terrain for the start of the Ulster racing calendar. The Cookstown 100 kicks off our series, and though the weather hasn't been kind to the organising Cookstown and District Club, that hasn't put off the spectators who've chosen their particular vantage points on the new, and some would say controversially short, orator circuit. Thank you very much indeed, Jackie. Well, the weather may be miserable, but it certainly won't dampen the spirits of these men on their 125cc machines. Robert Dunlop on bike four, hoping for a big season. Work going on on someone's machine there. It's a Honda, and it can only be one man's bike. Your man himself, Joey Dunlop, in his 31st season of racing. Bike six is Gary Dines on a Honda, beside the Honda of bike 55, Darren Lindsay. We're almost at the start now of the Super Kings 125cc event. And they're away, Dennis McCulloch on bike two, got a great start there, but it's 55 Lindsay who has made an absolute stormer. Now, for safety reasons, they're off in a couple of waves and an excellent start by bike 60. Look at him go, Ronnie Scott there. The 125 scream up through the gears, up to about 135 miles per hour. Sixth gear down into Gorchin Corner, down through the brakes, down through the middle and the spray on the road. And it's 55 Lindsay, followed by Gary Dines in second. Or is he? Oh, look at Dunlop. Joey Dunlop up the inside of Gary Dines. He's an expert performer in the rain, is Joey Dunlop. And he's got a sights now in 55. Darren Lindsay, who's storming into an early lead. Next up for them, McAdoo Benz, but who will be in front in the second wave? It's 17, Darren Burns. Well, remember, someone in this second wave can actually win the race. It's not just who's in front on the road, it's all on corrected time. Down into Mackney's corner, and just look at Darren Lindsay on the nibble, kittering 125cc Honda. He's opened up an even bigger lead from Joey Dunlop in second, Gary Dines is third, Dennis McCulloch fourth, and then Robbie Dunlop in fifth place. Well, back in seventh, bike ten there is Mark Curtin, still with a lot of work to do. They shift them up through the gears, third, fourth, up into fifth gear, and about 120 miles an hour up the hill to Craig Mount. And just look at the little jump here. Oh, Lindsay is on the gas, and opening up a big, big lead from Joey Dunlop in second place. And Gary Dines, a waffle there. Well, Dines is really on the gas, isn't he? Dunlop goes through safely, and Curtin through safely as well. Round the bales, almost touching the curves, Darren Lindsay. A quick acceleration here up the fourth gear, then back to third and back to second. Round the corner at Orator and down round the start-finish area. Just about 60 miles an hour here. And Lindsay very carefully and very safely through treacherous conditions. Now he'll open up the throttle and really let it rip. Has a little look over his shoulder. He'll see Joey Dunlop in second. Smooth style from him and Gary Dines in third. Bike 17, a Gorchian corner. Look at the concentration there on bike 17. It's Darren Burns, and on corrected time, this is a great race from Darren Burns. He's in fourth place at the moment. Joey Dunlop is still in second, and Gary Dines third. And the leader, who's way, way out in front, is Darren Lindsay. You can see him there catching up with the back markers already. And no wonder, because on lap five, he recorded the fastest lap, so a fastest lap for Darren Lindsay. It's a great race by him. Oh, but Dennis McCulloch's out. Bike two, Dennis McCulloch. His race is over. It's certainly not over for Joey Dunlop, though. Gary Dines right in his slipstream, right in his toe, with his eyes set on the old master, and just look at the style there, nice and safe, through dreadful conditions. Really, really wet surface, and Dunlop safe as ever. At Gorchin Corner, splashing through the puddles, it's 55 Lindsay, and he's catching up with Raymond Hanna. Well, Hanna's got a big surprise in store, because Lindsay is taking this race by the scruff of the neck on lap seven, and there's absolutely no stopping him now. At Craig Mount, Curtin goes through, Burns goes through with a big wheelie. Oh, but Robert Dunlop's race is over. Dunlop has a problem, and out goes the cross on Honda. But these two men are certainly not out. In fourth place at the minute is 10, Curtin and 17. Darren Burns, is he going to go past him? Well, Burns is making a big effort here into Arda Crossroads, and he goes through. Excellent move by Burns, and on corrected time, he's in fourth place. Curtin's in fifth, Gary Dines in third, Joey Dunlop in second, and of course the leader at Mackney Corner on the final lap on the home straight now is bike 55, Darren Lindsay. Well, this is a sterling performance by him as he accelerates up the Craig Mount. He'll be reaching fifth gear here at about 130 miles an hour. Joey Dunlop still got his sights on him, but I think it's too late for Dunlop to catch him. Oh, takes a little wide Dunlop there and a little slide of the back tyre. He's in a safe second, but at the checkered flag, it's Darren Lindsay who takes the race win. And in style with a little wheelie, Lindsay's the winner, Joey Dunlop in second place. And it's Dines, Burns and Curtin who will fight out for the minor places. Excellent opening road racing win for Darren Lindsay. Uh, that was a good win there. Just went start to finish. Um, I knew how to get away. It's just a bit of no spray, you know, coming off all our bikes, so uh, it worked out really well. 
you certainly pulled out a, a big advantage there. Mm. Was that the intention from the outset? Somebody said they thought nobody had told you it was raining. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, the bike was absolutely jumping out of its skin. It was going really well, the bike. And uh, what suits it probably around here, you know, all the wee road ends, all the slow corners. It was getting away really well. So, um, But the wet didn't really bother me that much. <laughs> the course has changed a little bit this year. How did you find that? Mm. Um, and they took the loop off the, the far end of it, you know, which was a wee bit bumpy like, but it's a bit of a, a sort of short circuit road race, isn't it? Bumpy or not, Darren Lindsay enjoyed his day, the winner there of that 1 2 5 race, followed by the old maestro himself, Joey Dunlop, in second. Third was Gary Dines. Well done to Darren Burns, who came through from the second group to take uh, fourth place, the young man from Lisburn. Dubliner Mark Curtin was fifth, Trevor Ritchie was sixth. As you can see, there was no improvement in the weather, but it didn't stop Joey, number three, blasting into the lead in the junior race. Brief highlights here from Stephen. Well, it never rains, but it pours. The weather getting worse at Cookstown, but who cares about that? Certainly not Joey Dunlop. The wet weather doesn't deter him. An expert performer in these kind of conditions. Bike number three, the unmistakable yellow helmet of Joey Dunlop, takes it very carefully round Mackney Corner. Round the kinks now and then accelerating up through the gears. Second, third, fourth, up the fifth gear, 120 miles per hour. And he's leaving the rest of the field in their wake here. Second wave goes through. Look out for bike 21, Stevie Thompson. He's a solid performer. At order crossroads is Gary Dines. Dines down in third place at the moment, about to go through the start-finish area, but already well past there and down at Gorchin Corner. On lap six is Joey Dunlop. What a great ride by Joey Dunlop. Oh, Dunlop's down! Dunlop is on the road! His bike slides away as well. Well, was it a mistake or is it a problem with the machine? You can see the little twist grip there from the throttle just bouncing across the road. And Dunlop twisting and turning it now. That may have been the problem. Thankfully, Joey Dunlop, unhurt, remounts his machine with a helping hand from the marshals. I'm not quite sure if they're actually allowed to do that, but Dunlop is off and running. It means one thing, though. Dennis McCulloch inherits the race win after a solid ride. But what did happen to Joey Dunlop? Stephen Thompson. fell off. It happens then again in the wet, and that's, I only got this bike new, so I hadn't even it wired on or anything. And it down at the bottom end, and just next thing I was hanging down the side of it, and then it went. Well, it didn't take you too long to get back up again and get underway. No, I was lucky enough, you know, I didn't fall off hard then. I was just down the main, the main road, like I, I was down every third year whenever I happened. I'd kind of forgot about it because I had trouble with it the whole race. And uh, I was starting to go around from quite near the end because I got a wee bit of break from Dennis and the next thing down, that was it all over. That was it, so you'll be going off to, to wire up the twist grips and the other machines for the rest of the afternoon? Aye, because it does happen, you know. And we're going to get in the bike yesterday, I never had time to get that sorted out, but I'm over again. <laughs> that would be a bit easier whenever Joey disappeared, uh, but uh, no, it was good, I enjoyed it. Nice. So, very tricky conditions, so this is getting worse. Did you see Joey falling off in front of yours? I just he slipped off down at the first road end, so he did, but he was up on his feet and all, he was, I knew he was all right. You know. Very quickly back and check. Oh. You had a bit of a disappointment in the 1T5 race earlier. What was your yeah. problem there? Uh, the bag got cut out. It must have got water in around the electrics or something. You know, it just it started misfiring and then eventually stopped. So I was parked. <laughs> he certainly wasn't parked in the junior race, but a shock in store for Joey. That spill at Gorchin saw the stewards invoke motorcycle union rules that riders may not remount. So a first ever disqualification for the great man. Stephen Thompson promoted the second. Gary Dines was third, followed by Martin Finnegan, Robert Hazelton, and Gary Jess. This is the machine that the crowds at Cookstown have come to see, the Honda VTR SP1, ridden by Joey Dunlop. The brand new Honda machine worth about a quarter of a million pounds. Can the Honda beat the Kawasaki's and the Yamaha's? That's the big question. And on lap eight, it's a Yamaha which leads this Lambert and Butler challenge, and it's Richard Britton which is on board the Yamaha. Well, he crashed at this meeting last year, but he's made a great start to this one. And he's opened up a massive gap from bike number four, which is Yule Duncan, and 13, Adrian Archibald, both on 900cc Hondas. And in the distance, we look out for your man himself, Joey Dunlop, on this beautiful Honda machine. Just listen to the grunt of this one. 
beautiful by Joey Dunlop. Didn't think he was receiving it this year, but a quick phone call to Bob McMillan from Honda, and the bike arrived within a week. At McAdoo Benz, the first gear corner, Richard Britton is way out in front. Britton, who swapped from Honda to Yamaha this season, and it certainly paid dividends. He is way, way out in front. Richard Britton leads from Dunlop, Farquhar third, Duncan fourth, and Archibald fifth. We're on board with Richard Britton on the climb up the Craig Mount. Britton up to about fifth gear, drops it down to fourth now for the corner. And over the little jump at Craig Mount, accelerating through the gas as well. Well, if that's all we can see, imagine what Richard Britton can see. Dreadful conditions as he rounds the bales. Up the gears now, up to about fourth gear, and has to drop it back down immediately. Second gear corner, 50 miles an hour at Ardor Crossroads. It's a quick flip to the right, then a flip to the left, and down through the start-finish area. And just look at the rain on the surface now, but it's not deterring Richard Britton. He is on a mission. Bike four, Yul Duncan still holds off the Adrian Archibald. Duncan's in fourth, Archibald's in fifth. Duncan riding the Robinson Honda, Archibald on the Downs Honda. These two men doing battle as they come through the start-finish area. Still way, way out in front, it's Richard Britton at McAdoo Benz. Joey Dunlop's holding off Ryan Farquhar on bike 77. But this is a great performance by Farquhar, concentrating on the 750 Kawasaki. Bob Jackson is manager, of course. And a good ride from Farquhar, who's behind the old master, picking up on his lines and may even get into his slipstream to try and make a pass. At Mackney Corner, oh look at Richard Britton, up amongst the back markers already, takes it very carefully here, remember that crash last year after he'd been awarded the man of the meeting, which forced him to miss the rest of the season, so Richard Britton just taking it very, very safely, round the back markers and accelerating now through the gears, look at these pictures, how are these men doing, we can only guess, through the wind, rain, sleet, snow, they race and absolutely anything, and Richard Britton certainly isn't easing off the pace, big wheelie at Craigmount. Britain leads on the road, and Yul Duncan, bike number four, still holds off Adrian Archibald, but Duncan's down in fourth place, Archibald on fifth on corrected time, and it's Joey Dunlop who started in the second wave that's making a big, big push. He's just behind Britain on corrected time. Britain may lead, but Joey Dunlop on the VTR SP1's in second. Ryan Farquhar is in third place. On his last lap now, Richard Britton just needs to cruise this bike home, even though Dunlop is closing in fast. He's behind the back markers and perhaps losing some valuable time. He's on the run to home now, Britton on the Schimmel Yamaha. At McAdoo Benz, keeps it nice and safe round that corner. Joey Dunlop still closing in with Farquhar in third. We're on board with Britton. Streams past bike five there of Eddie Sinton. And just look at the puddles on the road. The rain is still falling fast. Richard Britton keeps it nice and safe at the hairpin corner of Mackney. It's a first gear corner, now accelerates up to about third gear, flips it right and then flips it left. It's the climb up the great mount. He really squeezes on the throttle now. Fourth gear, fifth gear, 130 miles an hour for Richard Britton. Over the little jump there and round the right hander into Craig Mount. Richard Britton on the run to home. Will this be the first win of the day for Richard Britton on the Schimmel Yamaha? It would be some scalp to take if he could beat Joey Dunlop. It's just a shame that Britain didn't start in the same wave as Dunlop. They could have gone head to head, but he won't be worrying about that as he's on the run to home now at Arnor Crossroads. Takes it nice and gently, just the left-hander to negotiate, and then he'll take the checkered flag. He's first on the road, but has he got the race win? The crowd seems to think so. He celebrates with a wheelie. Duncan down in fourth place, Archie Falls in fifth, the man we're looking out for though, is number three, Joey Dunlop, he's on this very expensive Honda, but has Richard Britton on the Yamaha held him off, it's against the clock, there goes Joey Dunlop, Farquhar in behind him, Joey Dunlop crosses the line, but it's not enough, Britton takes the race win, an excellent first win of the day, Bob Jackson delighted with the performance of Ryan Farquhar in third, but there'll be nobody happier than Richard Britton from the skillet. Race, I've got a good start, got into the lead, but then I thought that Joey's the second group, so I'll just keep the head down, keep going, and see where it is at the end of the race. Conditions are getting worse out there by the looks of things. Yeah, visibility's getting bad when my vice was starting to steam up too, halfway through it, and it's getting harder to see and I was waving it, and still it wasn't curing, it was on the inside. So I'll just test right, I'll just keep the lanes that I was on before, so happy enough for that. No problems at all then, once you you were just conscious that Joey had started in the second group and he did make it through to second actually. Did he? Oh, it's <laughs> a good job then, there were only 10 laps and then a lot longer. Um, no, I thought I thought that's who would be coming through like, and I just kept the head down and kept going. 
Ah, it's all right, because conditions was really bad, and I had to start in the second group, you know. I had to go through a lot of the first group. You lose a lot of ground in here, because there's not many places, especially in conditions, to pass them. Day. What's it like as a bike to ride? It seems to have a fair bit of torque. Ah, it's all right, you know. It's, it's nice to ride, but the same conditions is... <laughs> it's very difficult because so much grunt and just put you off anywhere. Well, when we last spoke to you, Joey, we thought you'd got second in the 250cc event, but unfortunately after that, I think for the first time in your life, you were disqualified for remounting after you'd fallen off. What do you think of that as a, a rule? No, I think it's very silly, you know, it's stupid here, and I rule for a short circuit, and I rule for the northwest, and I rule for the coach down. Probably go to town again and they'll make up another rule. You know, whoever makes these rules up should open their eyes, look, and make a rule for one, one, like, for racing motorbikes, like, they're all the same, whether you fall off here or fell off the northwest, there's no difference. So you're a little bit unhappy, let's say, ah, to say the least. It's very silly, like, like I, I just stepped off mine, and it didn't hurry fall at all, like. And it cost a lot of money for them bikes, like, and I did a bit of damage, and it cost a lot of money, and needed to take money and all off me, so, uh, that's stupid. <laughs> Joey was not happy, and who knows, they may well look at that rule change. Winner there of the Lambert and Butler, Richard Britton. The great man in second place. Third was Ryan Parker, followed by Ewell Duncan, Avian Archibald and Barry Gill. Joey will be out to make amends in our next race, the opening round of the Regal Championship. Despite the weather, the rain just keeps falling. It promises to be quite a battle over ten laps. Let's join Stephen again. We're on board with Richard Britton for the start of this Regal 600cc race as he accelerates up to about 130 miles an hour through the middle. Well, these pictures scare the absolute pants off me. Richard Britton tucked in behind another machine. He can hardly see for the spray. Breaks down now to this first slow right-hander. Looks like Adrian Archibald, his own sparring partner to his left. The back tire there of, yes, it's Adrian McFarlane. Adrian McFarlane's in second place, Britain's in third, and it's bike 12 of John Donnan. Well, John Donnan made the best start there, and Donnan leads. McFarlane's in second, Britain's in third, Archie Ball's in fourth. This is going to be one heck of a scrap. Third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear, and now these bikes, the 600cc machines, up to about 120 miles an hour, up the little jump. Next up for them is Craig Mount. Four, Round the bales, Donnan still leads. Tucked in behind him is Adrian McFarland. Is McFarland going to make a pass on John Donnan at the order crossroads? Well, yes, he is. That is a brave, brave move there. A super move by McFarland, and he takes the lead of this Regal 600cc race. There was nothing Donnan could do about that. Slipping and sliding, Adrian McFarland on the Yamaha R6 with Donnan tucked in behind him. Went a little wide, always let Britain through. Now Britain's up into second place. McFarland's in first, Britain's in second, and Donnan relegated to third place with Archibald on the Dowd 600 in fourth. At McNeese, it's McFarland who still leads from Britain. Bike number eight, the green machine. The Yamaha machine of Richard Britton, they're already up amongst the back markers. It looks like these two men are going to do battle in the 600 race. And look at McFarland, gets the toe on the back marker, gets up the outside of him, and Britton's got stuck behind him. Well, Britton loses valuable time. The back marker's holding him up, weaving from side to side. Britton gets past him eventually. Well, Britton's past him, but he definitely lost time on McFarland. McFarland streams in front. He's on the run to Arthur, and a good sizable crowd watching this race despite the weather conditions. Well, Joey Dunlop wipes the visor. Joey with a few problems there on the Harris 600. Adrian Archibald's in front of him. Archibald's in third. Dunlop in fourth on corrected time. But at the front, it's still Adrian McFarland. McFarland leads this race. And look at the concentration there. Well, the stare resembles that of the great Philip McCallan, who announced his retirement this season. A little look under his arm, and he'll see Richard Britton, who's still closing in on him. Britton's in second place. And he's got McFarland in his sights, Adrian Archibald's third, Joey Dunlop fourth, and Yule Duncan, this man, on bike four is fifth place, John Donnan's in sixth place, and Ryan Farquhar on bike 77, the Kawasaki, is down in seventh place at the moment. Goes through, has a little look over his shoulder. But it's McFarland on the R6 at the slowest corner on the course, Macme corner, the hairpin who still leads the race, Britain's tucked in behind him, and Britain is making a big, big challenge. Twisting and turning, now it's up through the gears and up to Craigmount. They reach about 120 miles an hour up this climb at Craigmount. Oh, McFarland goes through. Where's Richard Britton? There he is. Oh, Britton's trying really hard to close in on McFarland. Duncan, good solid ride by him down in fifth place at McNeese. 
and Richard Britton. Well, we're on board with him. He's got tangled up with the back markers. That was James Courtney. Very Courtney, it's from Courtney. Let Britton through, but he lost a bit of time. You can see McFarland in front of him. And Richard Britton is trying his hardest to close in on McFarland. Through the start finish area, the slow side of the roads are certainly not doing that. This is the quickest part of the course, about 130 miles an hour. Adrian Archibald's in third place, Joey Dunlop is in fourth place, Duncan's in fifth place, and Donnan in sixth. They're on the last lap. Farquhar goes through, the crowd strain their necks, and who do they see in first place? Oh, somebody's down, Donnan's down, John Donnan's down. He's crashed, John Donnan has come off his machine at Gorchin Corner, and there's another bike involved. And I think that's Darren Lindsay's machine. Thankfully, both riders are on hurt, but the races are over. This man's race is not over. Slip slides all over the place. Adrian McFarland will take the checkered flag and a superb race win. An excellent performance by Adrian McFarland. And he's the winner of the Regal 600. Richard Britton with the wheelie takes second. And Adrian Archibald, yes, he's just holding off the challenge of Joey Dunlop. So it'll be Adrian Archibald in third place, Joey Tunlop in fourth, and Joey's already had enough. Will he make it to the checkered flag? Archibald claims his podium place, and Dunlop has a little glance over. No slowing down lap for him. He's just going to park it by the side of the road. Joey's had enough, a safe fourth place. Perhaps he's just nipping off for a quick cup of tea. The winner, though, Adrian McFarlane. No, I just was coming across a couple of back markers. I said, this is it. I was just trying to get through them best I can. Well, I saw earlier in the year, you were a little bit unhappy about the course being shortened this year. Uh, How do you feel about it now? Uh, I still don't like it. And why is that? It's too short. So you like a bit more length? Aye. Uh, well, you had a good win. Looking forward to the rest of the afternoon? I'll go out now, but I'm happy enough now. I know I could go to the pub now. So. <laughs> well. Go for another run round anyway. <laughs> Cheers, Adrian. He did well for someone who doesn't like the course. There he is, Adrian McFarland, the winner of the Regal 600 on the Andrew Hamptor Yamaha R6. Richard Britton second. Adrian Archibald was third, followed by Joey Dunlop, Yule Duncan and Ryan Barker. Next up, Joey Dunlop, Adrian Archibald getting ready for the start of the feature race, the Cookstown 100. It's over 12 laps. Should be exciting stuff. Here's our commentator again, Stephen Watson. Thank you, Jackie. The Royal Hotel Cookstown 100 should be an absolute cracker despite the miserable weather conditions. There's the Regal 600 winner, Adrian McFarland. He's on the second row alongside this man, bike number four, Yule Duncan. Davy Wood gives the screen a little wipe. And there's a plug. Even our local road racers are on the web. Bike number two, Dennis McCulloch, fancies a run out on his 250. But the race will be contested between the big bikes, there's no doubt about that. On the front row, it's Joey Dunlop, bike number three on the Honda VTR SP1. Alongside him is bike 13, Adrian Archibald. And they get ready for the off, and they're away. Joey Dunlop with a good start, Archibald with a better one. And look at Adrian McFarlane from the second row of the grid. Up to about 130 miles an hour now. Who will it be through the middle? It's your man, Joey Dunlop. Joey Dunlop hits the front. Adrian McFarland in second place, just about from Adrian Archibald there. The two bikes almost touch going into Gorchin Corner. And it's Joey Dunlop who really has the power. Will there be any stopping Joey Dunlop on this very expensive Honda? The second wave, Ryan Farquhar. Takes it nice and easy into Gorchin. Richard Britton's behind him. Remember, they're away in two waves, these bikes. So anyone can win the race. It's all against the clock, all in corrected time. It's not the first bike on the road. At McAdoo Bend, first gear corner, Joey Dunlop. Tucked in behind him, Adrian McFarland. Then it's Adrian Archibald. At Mackney, it's Joey Dunlop on this beautiful Honda machine, ridden by Jamie Toulton in the British Championship, sponsored by Paul Bird, but here especially for Joey Dunlop at the Cookstown 100, and it's the bike that he'll more than likely ride on the Isle of Man TT. Gary Dines on the 250 is set for the island as well, and Joey Dunlop hoping to make a big challenge at the TT this year. He was going to ride one of the new Honda Fireblades, but I think he'll probably opt for this SP1 instead. Says he likes the machine. This is his first outing on it. He leads this race, but in the second wave, Ryan Farquhar and Richard Britton are making a big, big challenge. Dunlop leads on the road and leads the race. McFarlane's in second on the road. Archie Bold's in third. 
Well, in my times, Richard Britton and Ryan Farquhar could be up amongst the podium places at the moment. They're having a private battle of their own down the track. Dunlop, McFarland, Archibald and Duncan. This is a good battle in the big feature race at Cookstown. Joey Dunlop opens up his lead. Dunlop with the eyes and the concentration and the stare takes his Honda, which believe me, when the Japanese built it, never thought it would be racing at the Cookstown 100. It's a Grand Prix and a superbike. They expected it to be seen on the world stage, certainly not at the humble Cookstown 100. But it's here, and it's written by Joey Dunlop, as is the Kawasaki of Ryan Farquhar and the Yamaha of Richard Britton. And it's a tight battle between all these machines. Dunlop, 47 years old, still holds off the rest of the field, but he certainly can't shake off Adrian McFarlane or Adrian Archibald. The two Adrians in behind Joey Dunlop, they're right in behind him. And perhaps McFarland is lining Dunlop up for a pass. We'll see as they climb up to Craigmount. McFarland looks under his shoulder. There's no chance he's getting near Dunlop. Absolutely no chance. Dunlop disappears into the distance. Back in the second wave. Oh, Ryan Farquhar and Richard Britton are getting held up by Gary Dines. Farquhar thought about going through. Dines on the 250 needs to move aside. Britton tries to go past up the inside as well. And Farquhar, they're both past Dines safely. We're on board with Britton as Dines disappears into the mist. At Craigmount, Farquhar followed by Britton. Richard Britton is closing fast and Farquhar. Oh, Britton's gone through. Or has he? Farquhar goes past him. Down into Orator. It'll be on the brakes. Who's the bravest man? It's Richard Britton. Moves up a place on the road. And Richard Britton in dreadful weather conditions. Oh, very brave move there. Right out touching the dirt with Richard Britton. On the road, Joey Dunlop still leads. McFarland's in second. Archie Ball's in third. And remember in that second wave, Britain is now ahead of Farquhar. The times are all very close between these five men, but it's Dunlop who's out in front and on corrected time. He leads this race. Here comes Britain. Here comes Farquhar. The two men touch. This is an incredible battle between these two men. And Britain it is who shakes off just about Ryan Farquhar. Well, what a ding dong they're having. Britain and Farquhar. McAdoo Benz, Dunlop still leads. McFarland's in second, Archibald right behind him. This race has a long, long way to go. Dunlop, nice and carefully in the deteriorating weather. Remember, Dunlop dropped his 250 machine already today. He doesn't want to do the same with this brand spiking new Honda. Dunlop accelerating now. He'll reach about 130, 140 miles an hour up this climb. Fifth gear into Craigmount. Still holds off McFarland and Archie Ball. Oh, Dunlop, both wheels in the air. And Mackney, Britain on 18, is still ahead of Farquhar 77, but they're still in the thick of the action. Dunlop, wider line than McFarland and Archie Ball. Well, I thought Dunlop would have disappeared into the distance by now, but there's no chance of that because McFarland is tucked right behind him. Dennis McCulloch on his 250, down in seventh place at the moment. And looking forward to the Isle of Man TT, no doubt. Gary Dines is bound for the island as well. Oh, Gary's had enough of this one. Must have a problem. Gary Dines on his 250, which is from the Royal Hotel, Cookstown 100. And the sponsor of the main race is also Gary Dines' sponsor. Well, that's a big disappointment for him. Parks the bike by the side of the road. But who's at the front of the main race? Who will it be? Down in the Mackneys, it's Joey Dunlop who still leads this Royal Hotel Cookstown 100. Joey Dunlop's in front, but Adrian Archibald and Adrian McFarland are sticking to Dunlop like super glue. They won't let your main man get away from them. And McFarland and Archibald have got Dunlop in their sights. Normally he pulls away from them, but the two men are sticking close by him this time. McFarland and Archibald right in behind Joey Dunlop. McFarland and Archibald, can they go past Dunlop? Yeah, yes they can. Well, McFarland does anyway. Dunlop's trying to get into second. Well, he must have a problem because Archibald's gone up the outside of him. Well, Dunlop goes from first to third, Archibald from third to second, and McFarland from second to first. He leads the feature race. Is he going to take a back-to-back -back win? Remember, McFarland won the 600. Richard Britton will have something to say about that because he is still piling on the pressure, as is Ryan Farquhar. McFarland may lead the race, but on corrected time, Richard Britton is in second, Britton is in second, and Farquhar's in third, and that means Archie Ball's in fourth and Dunlop fifth. So the battle between these two waves really is heating up. 
on the road. McFarland leads, it's nip and tuck between these five men. Dunlop has dropped right off the pace now. And McFarland takes it a little wide there, gets away with it. And Archie Ball right behind him, and Dunlop has definitely got a problem. You can see Joey Dunlop with a problem. And falls way behind Archie Ball and McFarland. Richard Britton, well, he took a little gingerly there as well, didn't he? Britton holds off Farquhar. Richard Britton on the Yamaha. In second place at the moment on corrected time. It's confusing for the fans, but it is all done in the interest of safety. This new 2.1 mile circuit, not big enough to take all the bikes off in one wave, so they have to do it on corrected time. The riders mightn't like it, but it's certainly producing some spectacular and some exciting racing at Cookstown. McFarland and Archibald are doing battle as they have been doing all day. Four laps to go and get the stopwatches ready because it's anybody's race. McFarland and Archibald, Britain and Farquhar. Who will it be in the checkered flag? McFarland is still ahead of Archibald. Round orator. At Craigmount, Richard Britton. Farquhar right behind him. McFarland breaking down from about 130 miles an hour. Archibald right behind him. Oh, slipping and sliding all over the place as McFarland has to take the corner too wide. He did it last time and got away with it. And he got away with it this time, just about. The fans urging on Adrian Archibald. He's in his slipstream, he's in his toe. And Archibald up the outside. Archibald goes through at McAdoo Benz. It's Archibald who hits the front of this race. McFarland behind him. And what a performance by Adrian Archibald. A brave move there, picks up on the mistake of McFarland, and Archibald leads this race. McFarland's in second, on corrected time, Britain's in third, and Farquhar is in fourth place. Joey Dunlop's dropped off the pace a wee bit. He's down in fifth place at the moment, still taking it nice and steadily. Joey Dunlop, there he is on the Honda VTR SP1, up towards Craigmount. But at the front, it's Adrian Archibald safely through Craigmount. And he's got a long, long gap between him now and Adrian McFarland. What's happened to McFarland? Oh, big wheelie from McFarland. And at the start finish area, it's Adrian Archibald. He's got his eyes firmly focused on a race win because he's got rid of McFarland altogether. McFarland on corrected time has dropped to fourth. McFarland is only in fourth place. And that means Richard Britton, this man, Bike 18, is up to second. He's up to second place. Farquhar's in third on corrected time. And it's Archibald who leads, but just about from Richard Britton. Well, it's a shame Britain and Archibald weren't out in the same wave because these two men will do battle all season. There's no doubt about that. They're having to do it on corrected time this time. Archibald has no idea how much of an advantage he has. I can tell you it's just about a second or so from Richard Britton in second place. McFarland's dropped away. He's in fourth place with Ryan Farquhar in third. What a good performance by him. So Archibald, Britain, who will it be? Well, Joey Dunlop will not be winning this race, but he has broken the bike in gently for the Isle of Man TT, where I expect a big performance from him. He's got his eyes set on the Formula One title, which he won five times back to back in the 80s. Farquhar, good solid ride. He's ahead of Dennis McCulloch on the 250. Farquhar down in third place on corrected time. Britain is still in second, and Adrian Archibald still leads this feature race. Archibald out on his own, man on a mission. He's racing against the clock. It makes it all the more tricky. It's a very difficult race to run because he doesn't know quite how close Richard Britton is. He's certainly shaken off the challenge of Adrian McFarland. And I can tell you that he's in fourth place still. McFarland's still in fourth place as he starts the climb to Craigmount. So Richard Britton still trying hard back down the track. We're on board with him. He's got past Dennis McCulloch. Britain past Dennis McCulloch, who uh, has turning in a sterling performance on a 250, I can tell you. They're out of Mackney. They're up the pool to Craig Mount now. Look out for the... Oh, he's got past Joe Duncan. Well, he slid past him with ease, didn't he? On board with Richard Britton is certainly a thrilling and a hair-raising experience. There is no doubt about that. He is producing some absolutely stunning pictures around the Cookstown 100. Around the bales, up to about fourth gear now, and then breaking down to second to take this tricky right-hander at Orator Crossroads, then the left-hander, and across the start-finish line, and Britain will accelerate up to about 130, 140 miles an hour, down towards this corner, which is Gorchin. Already there is Adrian Archibald. Archibald on the Dowd Honda is turning in an excellent display. 
He's got James Courtney in front of him. Courtney indicates for Archibald to go past. And thank you very much, says Adrian Archibald. Nice to see Courtney back racing this season. Joey Dunlop down in fifth place still. And the crowds just love him, don't they? And they love to see him on this spectacular machinery. Adrian Archibald, unlucky for some, bike 13, certainly not unlucky for him at the moment because he leads this race. He's holding off the challenge of Richard Britton. Great pictures from the Cookstown 100 as Adrian Archibald accelerates now up through the gears. He'll reach about 120, 130 miles an hour up towards Craigmount. Look at him squeezing on the throttle. McFarlane still down in fourth place, still trying hard. It's he and Farquhar who's in the second wave who are doing battle for that podium place because the main race will be between Adrian Archibald and Richard Britton. Joey Dunlop is still in fifth. Around the bales for the last time on the run to home is bike 13, Adrian Archibald. Hard breaking now into Arthur. He's got a right and a quick left and then across the start finish line. He'll take the checkered flag, the first bike on the road, but he won't know whether he's won this race until Richard Britton crosses the finish line. Archibald finishes safely. McFarlane into the start finish area. By my reckonings, he's down in fourth place because Ryan Farquhar is holding that third position still. We await Richard Britton on the Yamaha. Can he upstage? Here in Archibald. The fans wait to see where Richard Britton is. Joey Dunlop finishes in fifth place. But where is Richard Britton? He crosses the finish line now. Has he won it? No, Archibald takes the race win. Yeah, that's right. Just been taking it steady all day and got away with Joey and Adrian McFarlane there. And sort of felt good, so I made a break for it about halfway through. And I think I've won. <laughs> well, we hope you've won to say that they're checking out to see where Richard Britton was. He came through from the second grip into second position, but you stayed behind the other couple of guys for a couple of laps. Did you just get fed up with that and decide to get away from here? Yeah, well, I just got settled in and sort of knew I could go a wee bit quicker. And then, as I say, Joey started slowing down and McFarlane moved through and I passed him and just seemed to pull away then. Well, the Dowd machine you ride on here, it's a big bike. Is there not quite a handful out there in those wet conditions? Uh, I actually opened it for my Regal 600 at the finish up, so it was, it was easier route than the big bike, so maybe it's paid off. Well, Richard, a good race, but you started there back in the second group. Why was that? I have not clue. I thought maybe that it was an invitation race. I thought they might have took the, the first race, Lambert and Butler, and put us, you know, that position's front row that way, but... I have no clue why they started me in the second row. I was kind of disheartened because I knew all the quick guys were in the front group and they were getting away. I think a lot of people couldn't figure out why Richard Britton had to start in the second group, but there he is, he got second place. Adrian Archibald, though, taking the victory on the 900 Dodge Honda. Third went to Ryan Farquhar. In fourth place, Adrian McFarland, followed by Joey Dunlop. And in sixth place, Dennis McKellar. Well, the cars may have had to adapt for the weather, like the headgear, but the riders certainly shone at the Cookstown 100 in really dreadful conditions. Next up for us, the Tandragee 100. Join us there. Bye for now.